Out on the Floor Records first opened um, probably just over 20 years ago. The name Out on the Floor is a Northern Soul record. We used to sell a lot of soul records. Obviously, it was around the early 90s, um, a boom time. CDs had kind of just come out. Um, I must add also before my time as well. I've only actually been here 10 years, but you know, the previous owner, um, yeah, as I said, had, had the shop when it was probably very good time to have a shop. <clears throat> CDs, general public couldn't buy music on the internet because there wasn't any internet. Um, no such thing as, you know, I, iPods, etc. So when you wanted your records, CDs, you would come to, um, you know, a record shop like ours. On the floor, I suppose we specialise still in vinyl, although we do sell CDs, but it is traditionally vinyl we sell. Um, obviously it being Camden, we sell classic rock, indie music, you know, to artists such as Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, Beatles, etc. Um, you know, that's, that's still um, very much um, our staple, but also we specialise in reggae very much so, and soul, uh, and we also have our own reggae label, Tough Scout. Um, which is doing, you know, very well at the moment. Young are still buying records, you know, very, still quite a sort of male dominated um, area though. Um, but, you know, we do, we do get sort of a very cross section of people coming in here. And still, you know, a lot of tourists will come in and they'll want to buy a Beatles record because Abbey Road's just up the road. The biggest problem is not selling records, it's paying the rent. Um, I'm sure it's the same, not just of record shops or bookstores. It's not that digital is killing music, it's just uh, the landlords in London are particularly greedy. Having said that, our landlord's good, personally, but it's still very, very expensive to, to operate a shop in London. That's why every, every second shop's a cafe, a Starbucks, or Costa, or Cafe Nero. That's it, really. I'm the one your mama warned you about. See me. Well, Sounds of Swing opened up, uh, it was about, probably about 17 years ago, I guess. We were in we were in an old location, just around the corner from where we are, um, for about 14 years, moved to where we are now, about three, three and a half years ago. Um, and we sell rock and roll, rockabilly, um, country, 60s garage, uh, rhythm and blues, blues, 70s punk, 60s punk, you know, anything we kind of like, basically. I drive a little red sports car, as you plainly can see. I don't know if we've particularly got a strategy as, as such, but um, I mean, it's, I suppose vinyl has helped a bit because the, the vinyl coming back is always what we wanted to sell anyway, and now there's so many sort of singles and um, mainly singles, but also LPs coming out. Um, I mean, I don't know. I guess we. I guess we can survive as long. I mean, it's not really. It's not really business-wise because we kind of do okay as a business. It's more. It's more kind of greedy landlords trying to put up rents. Um, that's really more of a more of a problem to us than it actually is. Uh, actually, sort of selling selling records. That's that's kind of the easier part. But it's always the worry that the landlord next the next time the rent is reviewed, they're going to put the price up again. You know, you can only survive so so much. I guess. That ever could be. I look so good.